does in the Course in Miracles in the, the manual for teachers, who would look back with longing on a slaughterhouse? Uh, in, in he's saying, anytime you look back on the past and believe the reality of it, you're looking back with longing on a slaughterhouse. That's pretty strong. Jesus even uses the word slaughterhouse. I was quite amazed. And then it reminded me of the part of the Course where it says, all of the roadways of the world lead to death. Men have died upon seeing this, but if they'd just taken the one more step, they could have been led to heights of happiness. That's really getting down to your dark night, or your symbolic dark night, when you just start to realize that everything that you could possibly pursue in this world, everything you could humanly pursue, or I'll say personally pursue, all leads to the same thing. Because all assume that you have a separate entity, a separate personal identity that God didn't create. And, and the ego is the death wish. And guess who made up all these bodies, all these seven billion bodies? It wasn't God that created the earth. It wasn't God, like in Genesis it said, God created the heavens and the earth. But God didn't create the earth, didn't create the black holes, the cosmos didn't create linear time, the ego projected the whole thing. The ego is behind the Big Bang. The ego is behind everything of time and space. Now that's, that's helpful to know as you're starting to let go of this faulty belief system, because then when the thoughts start to come up about helping something, you know, helping heal the planet, saving the whales, the ecosystem, the ecosystem climate. right, climate, uh, trying to re reduce emissions in cars, uh, carbon emissions, you know, to, for the hole in the ozone layer, and all kinds of things, you start to realize, wow, if this is all generated by the projection of thought, and all this projection of thought, which we could call miscreation, is coming from the belief in separation from God, then I need to learn forgiveness. I need to learn to release that belief that I am actually separate from God. I would want to put my full energy in one thing. You know how they always warn, don't put all your eggs in one basket? <laughs> put all your eggs in that basket of forgiving the belief in separation. Now, I will say from my perspective, in the parable of David, that David was an activist. So I was quite active in all those things that you're talking about. I saw it as, as altruism. I saw it as having compassion uh, for everything and everyone that was around me, you know. I saw it as, as wanting to alleviate suffering and so forth. And that was my like a baseline starting point. And then the more I gave myself over to the Holy Spirit and Jesus and the Course, it was a convincing job. It was, it was saying, hmm, you've got a good heart there, <laughs> but you're misplacing a lot of your energy. Uh, into this belief that, that you can help solve the riddle, or solve the puzzle, help the puzzle of the external world, when his whole workbook was teaching me that the thoughts that I think I think, and the world that I think I see, are actually the same. My thoughts are images that I have made. My meaningless thoughts are showing me a meaningless world. He was just making the connection between these egoic thoughts and these images that we call the world. It seems to the human experience that the world is out there. It's outside of the body, and it's big. It's bigger than big. It's a pretty, seems like a vast cosmos. But this whole division between inner and outer is the problem. And, and we're all like ideas of oneness, but, but this is actually a practical way of coming into that oneness experience. So I wouldn't dismiss any of those feelings. If you have any feelings come up of if it's frustration, like of, of inability to change the world, if there's a sense of helplessness that, that arises, or if there's a sense that even though I, I have the power, I've got the power, <laughs> and you are trying to apply it to the world, and it's not fully coming around, you know, in your awareness and everything, then, then that's what takes you inward, that just draws you inward. I found, for me, I kept looking at, what is the grievance, what is the grievance? It goes so deep that at one point, 
Jesus told me, you still believe people are people. And I was like, oh gosh. You know, it's like, this is just when you think you get down to the bottom of it. But it, it's like, people are people. But what you start to realize is, he, he would follow it up with, with saying this. He said, listen, like the Bible said in Corinthians, you're looking through a darkened glass. You, you're looking through a dark filter. You don't really think God would create suffering, you know, suffering. Why would God create suffering? Why would something, a presence that's all loving and all knowing and all powerful just decide one day to create suffering? Or even to have a day. There aren't even, in, there's not even a day to do it in. But what I started to see was, was the whole thing was, the first part of my work with the Course was Jesus kept saying, you know, you have to see this is a perceptual problem. That everything that you're perceiving in this linear world is part of a distortion. That's like a major perceptual problem. And I've done whole talks on this. Like, I've done talks to psycho psychotherapists and psychologists and counselors. Like, for example, we have this thing called psychosis. Now, psychosis is defined as a break from reality. Yeah, that's what we've got going on. We've got the whole cosmos and everyone that's involved on planet Earth has got psychosis. Because they've had a major break from reality. <laughs> and, and they think that there's a few people locked up with psychosis. And nobody's admitting that it's all psychosis, that everyone's got psychosis. Then schizophrenia. Schizophrenia is having a split mind and hearing voices. What do you think the human condition is? It's having a split mind and we've got seven billion voices. Aside from demons and ghosts and extraterrestrials, probably in the trillions, all these voices that we're hearing, that they aren't even real voices. That's a, that comes from a split mind that believes in both love and fear. So, you know, you can go down through all these different things and you can start to realize that it's part of a perceptual problem. So my solution for the last 20 years, since I've gone with all these Course in Miracle groups, is I've also stopped at some 12-step groups. And the 12-step groups, hi, my name is so-and-so, I'm an alcoholic or a sex addict or whatever. I say the Course groups really have to start to get with this and go around and start to first come to admission, hi, my name is so-and-so and I have a perceptual problem. <laughs> you are not even going to come close to accepting the solution until you admit the problem. Isn't that what we know about addict groups? If somebody says, if, they, if they're an alcoholic but they say, I don't have a drinking problem, I don't have a drinking problem, but what if you believe you're a human being and you don't admit that you actually have a perceptual problem, then Jesus and the Holy Spirit have to wait. It's like, okay, have it, have it your way, try it out if you want. You can play it out for centuries if you want, millennium, but it's not going to change anything. So at some point we have to start to say, you know, maybe I've been hallucinating. Maybe I've been seeing something that's not there. Maybe I've, I have lost touch with God and I've had such a deep amnesia and I'm in so many layers of dreaming now that I forgot that I'm dreaming. That I'm actually taking the dream to be very serious. Like when we sleep at night. You know, it seems, they could be very serious dreams. They could be n night terrors and nightmares even from, from believing the content of the dream. And, and now we have a pathway that's saying, listen, I'm going to work with you, but, but you're, it's much ado about nothing, like Shakespeare said. You really are getting all upset about nothing. And you are persistent in trying to hold on to being upset about nothing. And that's what this whole journey is. Then we will laugh in the end. <laughs> Which, we're, we're getting a glimpse of that, glimpses of it, but that's, that's where this is heading. It's also a convincing job too, so we're ready to take our break now, but, but you, I always say, put it on the Spirit. If you're confused, don't think that you have to personally figure out how this is going to come around right. You, you just put it on the Spirit and say, show me, reveal to me, convince me. That was my only prayer, and make it obvious was my other prayer. And, and all I would do is stay with that prayer, and it did work. Okay, thank you. That was a very good question.